الحمد للہ رب العالمین وصلی اللہ وسلم علی نبی محمد ولا علیہ وصحبہ وسلم اما بعد تسکیت نفس purifying yourself, purifying your soul is another aspect of Ramadan and our fasting and in fact it's really the main objective because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran كُتِبَ عَلَيْكُمْ سِيَامُ كَمَا كُتِبَ الَّذِينَ مِنْ قَبْلَكُمْ لَعَلَكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says after addressing the believers, he says, Ya amanu, kutiba alaykum siyam. He says, Oh, you believe? Fasting has been prescribed for you. Similar to the way it was prescribed for those who came before you in order that you would gain taqwa. al ahabba. As we said before, taqwa Allah azza wa jal is doing the commandments of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and avoiding his prohibitions. And this taqwa, by doing those things, what we're trying to attain is that to increase our iman, to increase our faith. And that's by those actions. Those actions are a part of faith. And in fact, they increase it as well. So taqwa Allah is a type of ibad. It's a type of worship. By doing what Allah commands, you're doing those actions of worship and staying away from what He prohibited. This is also worship. And this in turn makes that internally, it purifies yourself to where it becomes natural, to where it becomes beloved to you. Beloved to you as a type of fitra, as a part of your second nature. And that's the thamarat of taqwa, that's the benefit of taqwa and purifying yourself. And that's why it's important for us to strive, to strive to attain that taqwa, to strive to do what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed for us. To strive to please Him, to strive to do those things outward, and those actions of ibadah that are inward, like tawakkul, like strictly relying on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's something we, we can't really measure necessarily by a person's actions. We don't know how much tawakkul they have, how much they're relying on their Lord subhanahu wa ta'ala necessarily. But as believers, that's what we're trying to attain. Taqwa Allah Azza wa Jal. And rely upon Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala outwardly and inwardly coming closer to Allah, doing those things He subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed for us and those things in which He prohibited us. All of those things will help us attain that taqwa Allah azza wa jal and ultimately that tizkiyya, tizkiyya to nafs it's a type of tarbiyah, it's a type of purification and education for our souls, in fact. You know, to make that progression by obedience to Allah. And just yesterday, I was speaking to one of the students of knowledge in our area, Min Fadli Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and he gave us some very excellent advice about how to be thankful to Allah and how to attain taqwa Allah Azza wa Jal. And one of the things he mentioned was dhikr Allah Azza wa Jal. That making a lot of dhikr, a lot of remembrance to Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. 
and having good companionship. All of those are in accordance with the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. You'll find all of those hadith that encourages, encourage us to attain those attributes in Riyadh al-Salihin. You'll find them all there. How to get this taqwa and making constant dhikr. And this is one of the greatest acts of ibadah. Dhikr Allah By remembering Allah, it helps you to avoid the sin. By remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it helps you to attain that khashya in the heart, that your heart will become soft. And that's the tizkiyah we're talking about, the tizkiyah to nafs, the purification of the soul. All of those things are related, the taqwa, the khashya, and the tizkiyah to nafs. They're all a part of tizkiyah to nafs, of purifying the soul. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al Karim in an ayat that I'm sure we're all aware of, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qad aflaha man tazakka. The one who purifies himself has achieved a success. That's how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, measures success, by purifying ourselves. It isn't through the wealth we attain, because all right before that ayat, or right after that ayat, in fact. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Qad aflaha man tazakka. The one who has purified themselves has achieved success. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions, as we mentioned, that dhikr is a part of that, uh, a part of that purification. Qala subhanahu wa dhakar asma rabbihi fasalla. And he mentions the Lord, or rem remembers, re remembers the name of his Lord, and he prays. Fasalla. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the status of most of us. Bel, tu'thirun al hayat dunya. Rather, or nay, you love or you prefer the life of this world. Wal akhiratu khayrun wa abaqa. And the hereafter is better and everlasting. Allahu Akbar. That ayat, those ayats right there alone should be enough for us to reflect and to better ourselves and encourage us to strive to gain taqwa and purify our souls. And this reminds me of another thing the brother had mentioned yesterday, which was the key thing. He was talking about zuhud and he was mentioning athar of Imam Ahmed from Imam's, Imam Ahmed's book, uh, Kitab al-Zuhd. You know, it's the Kitab of Asceticism. And that he mentioned some narrations of the Salaf and how the Salaf of this Ummah, the Sahaba, first and foremost, the Anbiya, but alayhim afdal salatu was salam. And then the Sahaba to Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the way they had yaqeen in this deen, yaqeen billah, they had firm belief and certainty that they were going to meet their Lord and certainty that their Lord exists and certainty that Allah will rectify their condition. And that they didn't have their hearts attached to this life. They didn't make their hearts attached to gaining wealth because a lot of times, sometimes we have the intention, we want wealth to do good because there's no doubt that helps us if you want to do uh, charity, if you want to pay zakat, if you want to uh, do uh, many, many things, build masajid, build marakas, a sunnah, be, you know, seek knowledge even. You need some wealth. You need some provision, especially if you have a family. If you have a family to take care of, you need wealth. So you want it for good, but you don't want to make that wealth the end. It's a means. And that's where the mal and the life of this dunya can deceive us. And that's where the zuhud comes in. Zuhud doesn't mean that you have to be poor or that you have to throw away wealth and be wasteful, no. But zuhud 
is not having your heart attached to the wealth. And that is very hard for us to do, no matter what we say on our tongues. When you get some money, look at how you protect it. Look at how you preserve it, your wealth. It's very difficult to, to leave that wealth and to spend. Sometimes you have extra and you know it's not going to hurt you, but you still, even that last little dollar, that last little real, that last little guinea or whatever, whatever your currency is, it's hard to part with it. And that's a sad sign. And that's a sign, that's something we have to work on. And that's where that tezkiya to nafs and spending for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will help purify that. That's another way to achieve some of that tezkiya, to purify the soul. We want taqwa Allah We want to purify ourselves because we want to be of those that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, qad aflaha man tazakka. That the one who purifies himself has attained success. That's what we want. We want success. And I ask that Allah the Almighty blesses us with success in this life as well as the hereafter. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our many sins and bless us to be of Ahla Taqwa, the people of Taqwa and, and the Tawabin, and to be of those who repent to Allah, because Allah, in Allah yuhibbu Tawabin, wa yuhibbu mutatahirin. And Allah loves those people who make tawbah. And He loves, meaning repentance. And He loves those people who are purified. So purify yourself physically, your body, be clean. Purify yourself mentally. And of course, purify yourself spiritually. And that's the tizkiya. That's the tizkiya, tizkiya to nafs we're talking about. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyya Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.